Hello and welcome back for another exciting edition of Wine Down Wednesday. My name is Mark. I'm Hey Charles. And you can see today I got a new assistant with me. In fact, the two of us are going to introduce to you Sula Sparkling Wines. Some of the best wines that come from the entire uh, country of India. And in fact, this are made in the method traditional, which is by far one of the most important and most expensive ways of making sparkling wine. So I'm quite excited to see what these wines taste like. Now, I noticed that you commented on the look of this bottle. Yeah, I did. You know, I think that this is great presentation, great packaging here, and I would be happy wearing a tie this color. Yeah, even, easily. So as we start every Wine Down Wednesday, I'll talk to you a little bit about opening champagne and sparkling wine, because champagne can only come from Champagne, France. And in fact, as we open this, the most important thing that we need to realize is that we point the top away from our guests, as well as away from each other. This could easily hurt someone. And as we open our cage for our sparkling wine, we're going to kind of be pretty ginger about this so it doesn't go flying off. You'll see, we'll remove our cage and we'll lightly, well that wasn't as light as I wanted it to be, lightly open this sparkling wine and we'll talk about, oh wow, very excited with this one. We'll talk a little bit about Sula. Sula is in uh, Nasik, Nasik, India. Yes. Excellent. And what are your thoughts on Sula? Uh, it is one of the best wine producers in India. By far? By far, and probably the only ones. So they have captured the market very well. The best and the only. I yeah. like that. But the Sula wines aren't that bad, so people appreciate the Sula wines. I agree. I, I think that these are great wines and they're very reasonable in price. Uh, less than about uh, 15 American dollars? 15 American rupees, that's like, yeah. Less than, less than 15 American dollars for a method traditional sparkling wine. Now, I'm here to kind of talk to you a little bit about how we look at sparkling wine specifically. And the way that we admire this wine is we want to look at the thin, small bubbles. And the quality of the wine is based not just on the size of the bubble, but it's also based on how consistent these bubbles are in the glass. Is this safe to say that there's a good amount of small bubbles in this wine? There is. I agree with you. Uh, it seems like this wine has a little bit of an orangish tinge to it. Do you see that as well? I see more of a yellow. Yeah, yellowish gold uh, getting there. Yeah, gold yeah. is a loose word, I think, for this one. Is that safe to say? Light gold. I like that. Light gold by far. Um, looks like it has some decent amount of bubbles as well. I think that this will be uh, at least of average, if not above average, quality, if that's safe to say. Let's go ahead and smell this wine. This is actually one of those few wines that you don't need to go ahead and swirl before you smell it because the effervescence of this wine will release the esters and the aldehyde so you're able to smell it just fine without swirling it. Let's go ahead and smell this wine. Wow, this is uh, very bready for me. Yes. Is there a specific style of bread that you think that this smells like? Uh. I get maybe some sourdough. Uh, yeah, I think wheat. A little bit of like a whole wheat bread. I definitely get a little bit of rye in here as well. Uh, not very many fruits though. Is that safe to say? No, I can smell a bit of lime. Oh, excellent! Now I'm so happy to have you today as my uh, second half for this wine down Wednesday. And as I always like to, cheers before we try our wine. has a little bit of sweetness to it. Yes, and add a bit of tanginess. Oh yeah, definitely a good amount of tart, a good amount of sweetness. It's safe to say that this is pretty well balanced. Yeah. I think that I would definitely enjoy this wine on a nice, cool uh, summer evening. Perfect. Easily. And uh, what, is there a specific food that you're thinking about that would go so well with this wine? I think prawns masala. Oh, that sounds delicious. I'm going with kingfish, Tandoori. Uh, Can see, I do that? Perfect. Oh, you give me a thumbs up. I like that. Yeah. Any uh, dessert that you're thinking? As Wine Down Wednesday should always be about dessert. Butterscotch. Oh, oh, that sounds spectacular. 
I think it's safe to say when we talk about sparkling wine, almost all food types can go with sparkling wine. And this one seems really approachable. Yes. What about the finish of this wine? Do you find it enjoyable? Yes. Yeah, it doesn't linger in a bad way by far. And uh, what about the alcohol? Do we feel warmth in our throat? I would say about low plus. I like that, low plus, medium minus, medium by far. You know, this is a 12.5% alcohol sparkling wine, which is about the average for a sparkling wine. And uh, it has a pretty well-rounded finish, a good complexity to the taste. And uh, I, I thoroughly enjoy this. If this is the way that the rest of our Wine Down Wednesday is going to go, then there's nothing bad happening today. Okay. Let's go ahead. I think what we'll do is we'll dump this wine out and we'll open our next bottle of sparkling wine. Now, the first bottle that we had was the Brut uh, Method Champenois or Method Traditionnel sparkling wine. Now, the next one you see is a different color. Obviously, this is their rosé. And uh, right off the bat, I noticed that there's something possibly growing uh, in between the corks. So that leads me to believe that possibly this wine not, might not be as well kept as we would hope it to be. Uh, no problem. As we come prepared for every Wine Down Wednesday, I will not pour this in your glass before I rub uh, and clean off the pieces. And I will ask uh, to reach over here as I grab a quick napkin and give it a little bit of a twirl. Because nobody wants to drink mold, is that safe to say? Yes. And this one I'm going to attempt not to make such a loud noise, as that's how you show your skill in opening sparkling wine. Right off the bat, you see a tremendous amount of bubbles just coming from the wine. Yes. And also I'd like to comment a little bit about the cork size. Uh, a smaller cork for this wine. A smaller cork, uh, which leads me to believe poor quality, but we're going to be the judge of that, and I always like to make sure that everything is quite Does the clean. size matter when you open uh, champagne? You know, I think that not only does the cork size matter, but I think we can see a little bit of seepage, possibly, in between where the wine has reached the cork in this process. You see that the cork is actually quite soaked in this wine. Yes. And uh, we'll go ahead and we'll pour our second glass of wine. I should always pour for my guest first, as I uh, truly apologize for that. And by far, we can tell from this Sula Rosé, this is also a brute wine, so we're expecting brute to be dry. Um, do you see, this has uh, probably more bubbles than the last one, is that safe to say? The, the bubbles are bigger in size as compared to the previous one. Definitely bigger, and by far they're much more dispersed. Uh, the first bottle, they had thin, small bubbles that went straight up to the top. This one, they're all over the place and much, much bigger. Yes. So this leads me to believe that possibly this wasn't done in the most highest standards of method traditional or method champenois. We see many more bubbles inside of this bottle more than the glass. And uh, color-wise, what color would you say this is? I'd say pale orange a very light shade of orange. I love that. I mean, I'm so happy to have you uh, today on Wine Down Wednesday. I think that that is by far a very great description. Uh, definitely has a slight amount of skin contact when we talk about this wine. This should be either made of Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier, or a combination of those. And it should be uh, fermented, second fermentation in the bottle itself. And uh, so when you say the skin contact, so would you expect some amount of uh, tannins? I certainly hope so, because I think a little bit of bitterness in this wine will make it a little bit more well-rounded than just sweet or just dry with acid. And what I'm thinking here when we talk about this wine is, I think that they possibly had a red wine that they blended with a white wine, created the assemblage, and then possibly added the yeast and sugar to create this wine. So it was already a, a rosé wine before they went with their second fermentation. And do you smell anything different in this wine than our first wine? I'd say this is much more fruity. Yes. The first wine smelled a lot more yeasty or a lot more bready right. by far. This wine smells more like white fruits and well-rounded light red fruits. Pineapple. Pineapple for sure. Um, 
melons. Melons. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, some horned melon, some cantaloupe, maybe a little bit of honeydew. Yes. By far, in fact, I think it's safe to say that this is like the color of a young cantaloupe. Yes. I was hoping for some watermelon in here, but I'm struggling to find some watermelon. If anything, I get a light bit of some young raspberry or underdeveloped raspberries. Does this wine smell better or worse than the first wine? I think this one is better than the previous one. Uh, I'm very excited, and as we like to in all wine on Wednesdays. Cheers. Much more complex. Yes. Much, much more complex. A good amount of acidity, a good amount of tartness. Yes. Is this wine drier than the first one? It has a little bit more sweetness to it, is that safe to say? Yes. And what about those little tannins? Let's put our tongue across our teeth or to the roof of our mouth. Very little, if no, any. Yeah. It's almost impossible to come up with any tannins in this wine. What about the taste of this wine? In fact, uh, it definitely tastes a little bit more like a sparkling cranberry mm. juice to me. I get uh, much less bready notes and a traditional uh, rosé flavor to it. Uh, definitely those melons, a little bit of honey, some honeysuckle, some flowers in there. Uh, definitely tastes much more complex than it smells, yes. without a doubt. And I think that this would go good with a nice chocolate dessert. Is that you're thinking the same here? I definitely agree with that by far. And. Is there anything else you want to add? Did you like this wine more? I think if I had an option for these two, I'd prefer the first one. You know, I'm sad to tell you, I'm a visual buyer, and I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with you, even first though I all, like the rosé. First of all, the bottle is appealing. Yes. The way they have presented it, it's more appealing. Now, after we have tasted it now, given option, next time I go to buy, I'll buy the first one. Especially if they're roughly about the same price. Same price, same alcohol content. Yes. And they're both mentioned to be brewed. Correct. So everything is almost similar, rather over the first one. I agree, I agree, and I think that possibly a, a very cute lady would be more impressed if you brought this bottle on your date than uh, maybe this bottle. Is that safe to say? Yeah. Yeah, they feel like it's a celebration, as every day with sparkling wine should be a celebration. Without a doubt, you don't have to have a specific day, a birthday, an anniversary, a day to have a celebration. You can have celebration every day of the week, easily. And I'm really excited for our last wine. This wine is actually Secco. And what we talk about this Secco Rosé is we're hoping that this should have a little bit more sweetness to it. It's about 1% less alcohol, where the first two wines were 12.5% alcohol. This one is 11.5%. And I see you're very interested in opening this one. I'm excited to watch you open this wine. Now, uh, these two bottles said Methode Traditional. Now, this is Methode Classic. Yes. You know, these two were made in the method of Champenois, or a Champagne style, where this classic method of making sparkling wine means little to nothing. It's actually something that's used for a consumer to have a peace of mind. Because we know the four methods, the tank method, the transfer method, the traditional method, and then what we like to call the carbonation method. Yeah, exactly. And we see none of those on the label, so we're leading to believe that they've possibly made their own sparkling wine method. All right. That just sparks my taste buds every time I hear that. Not so many bubbles as compared to the previous one. And if you see, this wine is actually still it's quite sparkling. sparkling. And the bubbles are Quite large, yes. yes, without a doubt, and uh, we've already known that they didn't mention anything about Method Traditionnel or Method Champenois in this wine, so uh, we'll be excited to tell maybe our viewers at home what these specific differences are between these three wines, and uh, first we'll talk a little bit about the appearance of this wine. A good amount of bubbles. Yes. They look more consistent more in a stream, yes. but quite large. Yes. Quite large. I think that that's definitely safe to say. Uh, what about the color? Peach. Peach. I'm going with like a really pale rose gold. Yes. Pale rose gold by far. Yes. 
And uh, anything else you want to comment about the color of this wine? I would say this is something a boy should give a load on by. I like that. As our Valentine's is coming up very shortly, oh, yeah. you have great timing, sir. I just want to cheers you for that. Now, tell me, what do you smell in this wine? Berries. Uh, like a handful of berries were crushed and put in this glass. I definitely get that as well. Uh, red round berries, uh, raspberries, uh, strawberries. We get some, maybe some cranberries. I like that. Maybe a little bit of some mulberries or some linden berries. If I could throw out an unusual berry in the world of wine, is there anything else? Any bready or yeasty characteristics in this wine? I. It smells uh, much more of like berries explosion than anything else. As you mentioned yeast, a hint of yeast, a hint of bread. I want there to be more complexity in this wine. Do you think this wine will be sweet? Looking at the color, I'm guessing there's more, there has been more skin contact. Yes. So I'm guessing sweetness, not so much. I'm, I'm so happy to have you today. I'm expecting more tannins. I, I hope so. Uh, I don't necessarily care for a sweet sparkling wine, so I'm kind of uh, go, trying to go with you on this one. And uh, we always want to thank our guest for joining us on this Wine Down Wednesday. Sweet? Definitely. By far much, much sweeter than our first two wines. Is yes. that safe to say? Yes. And no tannins. No, not very many at all. But it has a good amount of vanilla. Yes. And the flavor profile has a perfect amount of vanilla, a little bit of caramel. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you took some fresh berries, you put some sugar on top, maybe brulee them a little bit, and then added some vanilla extra.